Okay, we're back. We're live. So exciting. Uh, at 4 o'clock on a given Friday. Uh, one of our favorite shows. We have the Drone Leads uh, featuring Ted Ralston uh, as the host. Uh, and I'm Jay Fidel, and I'll be sitting in the studio. But uh, Ted is on the main. Where are you, Ted? Hey, I think I'm in uh, Kailua Corner today, uh, Jay, okay. uh, over on the Big Island. Great. And we have our special guest, uh, Stuart uh, Rudolph. He's uh, joining us by uh, Skype from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, and he's the president of a company called C2. Welcome to the show, Stuart. Thank you very much. Uh, great to be here. And that's Smart C2 for those. Smart C2, pardon me. That we uh, assumed that. Than C2. We assumed right. it was smart, you know. Uh, yes, sir. So the title of this show is uh, Drones, uh, where the drone leads, of course, but leading to a new level of commercial business. And I take it from, uh, you know, the title, your title, that uh, as president of Smart C2, uh, that has something to do with drones and its commercial business involving drones, and it is successful, am I right? Yeah, we're trying to uh, change the way people do business and uh, work with the evolution of the uh, drones into commercial industry. Well, tell us about the company, tell us what it does, how you started it, why you started it, and what its dynamic has been. Well, we're focused on uh, corporations and uh, distilling aviation best practices and corporate compliance uh, for the next generation of uh, devices that will be used out there, the unmanned. Uh, I have a long history with Ted uh, and working uh, with uh, Ted in government projects in the past. And uh, I saw a big need with the commercialization of unmanned aircraft and the need to be able to uh, deal with the end-to-end -end business part of the solution and be able to deal with all the compliance uh, from both the corporate end as well as the FAA and the regulations and bringing it all together and also dealing with risk management and the ability of uh, what drones, which are very powerful tools, and their ability to make sure that the users who are different than uh, the typical pilots who spend uh, a lot of time going to school to learn about flying and flying some very delicate aircraft uh, with unmanned aircraft and the change of paradigm that is for those pilots and those who are being uh, trained today to go out and fly. Who are your clients? Uh, we go after corporations as well as those who are service providers and as well as manufacturers of aircraft. Uh, would be uh, key components, uh, key customers uh, for us. Okay, Let me throw a Ted Ralston, you've, you've heard what, uh, what Stuart had to say. How much of what he said do you agree with? I don't generally agree much with what Stu says. You might ask him uh, the competition we've been having for some time. And uh, I, right now, I think uh, he's actually winning. I'll tell you what the, what the stakes in the competition are, maybe sometime privately, but I, that's just a joke. Uh, as an aside, uh, the big picture here is, Jay, that we're moving from a, a UAV domain uh, characterized by transition from model aircraft and RC aircraft and 1Z, 2Z, one of a kind, uh, systems that are dependent on freeware and on really unstructured uh, operational software. We're moving, as of this week, into a completely new domain of commercial UAV operations. As you all know, uh, on Monday, the new Federal Aviation Rule 107 went into effect, and I myself, as well as 15,000 other people, took the test this week to become certified unmanned aircraft pilots. And with the processing time of the FAA, in a week or so, or maybe two weeks, there'll be a lot of people on the street with unmanned aircraft tickets. A lot of them really have no aviation background. They prepared for the test, they got the training necessary to pass the test, but really bringing the whole concept of aviation management into the UAS domain is what we're all about. And that's where Stu and the systems he's got excel, because we can now get above the domain of, of, of simple freeware into the more complex domain of business control and risk management software in order to allow UAS to serve in the world of construction, in the world of disaster operations, in the world of the electric utilities and such. But without a really robust, trusted, uh, uh, durable software frame of reference for managing the, the system from the flight determination all the way to the software and anal analytics and, and databasing, without a robust system that is gonna serve the, the, the customer and, and 
survive the tests of those who want to penetrate it and cause it to fail. Uh, without that, we really don't have that side of the business in place. We, on this show, we've been focusing a lot on the, on the aircraft side, on the ground controller side, on the technology side, but Stu really pulls it all together into an operating framework that has the, the credibility and the survivability to be something that a commercial entity would invest in. So That's Stu, the, uh, let me ask you, did you take the test also? Uh, no, I, I am not a, a pilot. I don't fly. I'm all about the business part. Ah, ah, and, I, and I took that test years ago. <laughs> okay. So uh, what would you add to uh, Ted's you know, description of uh, your place in the market? Well, you know, uh, just to, to kind of, you know, go a little deeper. It, first of all, corporations are going to have people, let's say you're an electric utility company and you send somebody out and they have their cherry picker and they drive up. Uh, in the next couple of years, what you'll find is part of the toolbox, uh, there'll be an unmanned aircraft in there to examine those wires or examine that transformer or to examine that cell phone tower. Uh, and that will be commonplace as, uh, as these industries move forward for their infrastructure. And you'll do that uh, in, in, as beyond visual line of sight comes in. And what you need to do is you need to manage all aspects of that environment. A corporation, somebody you train somebody, there's a liability, just like they train them to use that cherry picker and just like they need to have a, a license to drive that to a location. You need to have all that infrastructure in place, including the maintenance of that uh, uh, aircraft, because uh, God forbid that thing creates a problem for you and crashes. Uh, as things move forward, the liability and the risk management. And uh, you also need to know when that person's out there flying, what do they do if that thing takes off on them or creates some kind of havoc around them in an incident? What's the plan? How do you bring that information to them directly? It can't be in a piece of paper and it can't be just in training. Uh, and so those are the things that we look at. And again, you have to have compliance. That person needs to be insured. And corporations today are gonna to be training their own and they're gonna be hiring outside service providers. What kind of insurance do those people provide? How are they handling that data? Well, how do they handle their aircraft and maintain their aircraft? Their pilots, what kind of training have their pilots been through? Each corporation might have a different set of criteria above and beyond what the FAA is going to relate, regulate and require that individual to do. And how you know that you're hiring those people to have those things. So you need to have that software infrastructure. And one other item, it's the training of that individual. If we try to teach these people what they need to do, there'll be a long, arduous cost uh, to that. And we look at how software, and this is what we've done in our application, brings those rules and regulations. And so when they go to make a decision, that information, that intelligence is brought to that pilot when they are making that decision on what to do. And then you have the whole aspect of that business, the inventory. Uh, knowing when that aircraft again needs to be maintained, who maintained that, all of the transparency and the accountability, because when something bad happens, you have to go back and be able to show that you did maintain that, that your people were trained. Those are all fundamental basics that need to be inside of a system. And what we've seen over the past year or so is that the people out there flying have been concerned more about their aircraft now that they're taking images, what are they gonna do with that? How are they gonna store it? Where's all that information? What about those pilots and the insurance? And this becoming more mainstream, and with now 107, corporations are going to be requiring that the rules and regulations of their corporation, of the FAA, of the local environment, all be into one. It's not just about flying the aircraft, it's about the business of flying. Well, now that means that you consult with uh, organizations that have uh, drone capabilities or want to have drone capabilities. How do you deliver that consultation, that advice? Uh, well, how, how do I uh, you know, get the benefit of your services? Well, we actually deliver that through our product. We teach people. You can go up to our website at virtualairboss.com and you can download a white paper that we came with, out with at the end of last year, beginning of this year, that talks about the, the key elements, the seven key elements that you need to have. Compliance, accountability, reporting, 
risk mitigation, data management, operational management, and that's your implementation. So each corporation has an understanding of their guidelines and policies, and you need to have a system that can be configured to be able to apply to that. So we work directly with the client and we adapt our system to their workflow, to so, their way. So it's software. I go on your website, I engage with the software and it answers my questions and gives me advice? Uh, it does not do that. It follows along with the guidelines. We work with you and configure the application uh, to be able to, to do that. And so you know, we install. Do, if I can yep. interject here, uh, Stu's got a couple of really good charts that have uh, been provided. If uh, Zuri can bring them up, we could uh, look through them. They kind of organize the structural flow of thought and collect all these various issues that that drive you to the direction of a professional level of software in order to manage this particular part of the business. Yeah, let's do that and uh, Stuart can describe it. So what are we yeah. looking at, Stuart? Okay, uh, the first slide that you have up there should be talking about corporations integrating drones. So we kind of take the three elements, the business... Well, the, I think the slides are mixed up. What we're talking about is uh, virtual airboard, uh, Airbo Airboss by Smart C2, and it's it says configurable platform for global uh, business schedule manage report okay so in that case these are the uh, key elements that you need to have and they talk about scheduling your aircraft and your crew uh, in the payload so you're doing your inventory management you know what aircraft is available not in maintenance uh, and you understand the capabilities of that aircraft so you can deal with that and you're dealing with your flights and your fleets and your scheduling. So you need to, in a large corporation with many different aircraft, just like you need to send the right crew out who have the capabilities to uh, a certain uh, job to do, we allow you to do that. The managing is of the actual flight, understanding before you fly, the weather, where you're gonna fly, what uh, other types of uh, restrictions there might be in that area that you're flying, uh, deal with your checklist if your corporation has a checklist for you to do before you fly to make sure you're doing everything properly just like in a manned aircraft environment you know when you go up and you're going to get on a commercial jet you notice that the uh, pilot is always printing out uh, of these old dot matrix well he's getting all the information of that flight their route their weather what's called the notums the notification airmen about other events going on in those particular areas of the flight, uh, any temporary flight restrictions, uh, our system bring those to the pilot, allowing them to do it. And they also bring, it brings the things that that corporation and uh, uh, has said to those pilots that they want any type of checklist. They understand what their safety procedures are. They can answer questions about themselves to see if they are ready. Have they flown too much that day? Have they, uh, have they done all the things that they need to do, uh, the weather conditions in line with uh, the ability to fly that aircraft? And then when you're all said and done, you need to create your reports. There are flight logs, there are incident reporting if you've had a problem with that aircraft, if the aircraft has problems itself, or you've crashed that aircraft. And then of course, the company needs to understand what their costs are. And some companies actually who are service providers might be charging their customer for the flight. So they might want to bill them through our system. So we bring all of that together and understanding where they are. And we make that happen within a click of a button. So all the pilot does is click one button, answer a question, and all of this other very strenuous thought processing, reporting, all gets done with a click of a button so they understand what Very, they very interesting. Uh, well, Stuart, we're going to take a short break. and we come back, uh, Ted, I'm sure you have a bunch of questions. You, you want to uh, elicit uh, more about this uh, from Stuart. Uh, so let's take a short break. We'll come back, and uh, uh, Ted, you can proceed. We'll be right back. All right. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. 
Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Go right on time, complying, if you will, with our schedule. We're, we're the drone leads, and we're talking about uh, a new level of commercial business through drones. Very important, with uh, uh, Stuart Randolph, who joins us uh, by Skype uh, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and he is the president uh, of Smart C2, which has written some really interesting software that helps drone uh, businesses comply with uh, Rule 107 and many, many other rules that apply to, uh, to drones. And, uh, of course, uh, the host of this show is Ted Ralston, and he joins us from the Big Island uh, by Skype Audio. So let's, oh. let's go to some more charts, and then, Ted, you can have some, uh, uh, some you know, queries you want to put to Stuart. Let's sure, put well, one I on the screen. To, like, if you don't mind, let me just lead off with a little bit of comment here. The discussion we had in the first part of the show was all about the various terms and factors in risk management, what we were really talking about in regard to this new technology that is coming at us and how we can think about risk management in the way of mitigating, pre-mitigating, and preventing so we have a, a strong, durable business uh, content associated with it. As it turns out, Stuart's been doing this the last couple of years, and I'll tell you sometime, maybe even on this show, how that actually started. But uh, as it so happens, the FAA, in putting together the, 10, the Rule 107, actually mandates in it a thought process that is about exactly the same as what Stewart's put together into this particular software. And if you study for the 107 exam and look at what's called the uh, aviation decision making or the risk management that is subordinate to that or the crew resource management, which is subordinate to that, there's a nice structure of how you think about risk management as the top level and how you address all the factors that could affect risk and then put them in their place right down the line and then we're ready to go. And as it, I was just astounded when I came across that because it almost is like the FAA was reading Stuart Rudolph's playbook. Anyway, uh, I think we have that playbook up here on the screen in, in four or five charts. And if you can describe them to Stu, he can highlight the points that are within that. Risk okay, Stu, Stu, we got a, a slide that says virtual air boss competitive advantages. And it begins with uh, sophisticatedly simple, comprehensive built in on a patented software, pre-configured templates, users uh, own their own data, and uh, SOA-based architecture. Can you describe what that means? Yeah, well, first of all, for the, as we were talking about, the new generation of pilots out there, you need to make it simple for them. Uh, p pilots who've been flying for years know that they have to spend as much time, or if not more, filling out paperwork as they do uh, flying. In today's uh, generation of pilots, they really just want to press the button and they want to go fly, one flight after another. And um, what you need to do is make it easy for them to do all the important logging and everything that we talked about on the first, help them with that risk management, help them uh, when they do click that button to fly, that you're doing all of their log books for them. All of that is being done organically, and that's what we do. We've taken and uh, distilled the aviation best practices, and again, the uh, business, the compliant business processes, and we distilled that to a click of a button for them so they can do the business of flying, and that's what we do. Now, uh, as Ted was talking about, we have a comprehensive solution. We're not solving one problem of a corporation. We're solving from one end to the other, uh, including securely managing all the information allowing them to do cost control, allowing them to understand what needs to happen and when they capture the data, capturing all that metadata so they have that information so years later they can go back. Uh, I, we built this thing because my team, myself, have years of experience working in both corporate and government agencies and understanding what needs to happen in order for people to do their job and be able to research and find things in the past. You're flying for one of two reasons. Either you're gonna deliver a package or you're gonna actually image something and you need to have all sorts of sensors and, and so forth. And we started patenting this technology for its use in other areas uh, way back, uh, first patent goes back to 1999. 
Uh, my late partner uh, had an idea and we've taken this rapid application configurable software infrastructure and we built this out uh, based on my work with Ted several years ago in dealing with high, uh, high disaster uh, aid relief and humanitarian aid situations and noticing how drones were gonna play a very effective role uh, in helping people identify uh, situations and being able to bring the right people in and the right material in to do that. And that's how we started working. So we, it, uh, a virtual air boss is taken out of the rule. So if I look at the rule, I can build virtual air board. I can build my own version of virtual air. Why don't I do that? Do you have competition? Is there somebody else doing exactly the same thing, driving there, it off the rule? There, there are, well, we, uh, we did this before the rules came out because we understand what the rules would be necessary part of the business. There are other people who try to do and do sections of what we do, but nobody brings together a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution and nobody uh, has patents uh, on, the, on that way that process is uh, to get that uh, done. And we're an open architecture, like we're working with uh, NASA and building out the next generation of UTM. We partnered with Air Environment for doing beyond visual line of sight. So we're always on the edge we're using our architecture, which is future-proof software uh, designed for the future and being able to bring things today and allowing you to grow into that software. So nobody has that uh, scalable, battle-tested uh, software has been used in many government agencies, uh, been used around the world for doing a variety of different things. Uh, and nobody's actually done that uh, and to the level that we have. Mm -hmm. What is, what is future-proof? Uh uh, Stuart, I mean, uh, the future is an unknown, unknowable. How can you make something future-proof? Well, if you have smart people thinking ahead, you're designing the platform on a ability of an architecture that allows you to grow and add on components and keep changing. And that's what we've done. And that's part of our patents on our technology and uh, part of uh, how we built out this system to allow that to be able to be comprehensive and for easily add on new technologies as it grows. You know, so uh, Ted, on, on this very point that uh, we're talking about, the future, uh, you know, one thing you mentioned very early in this uh, program is the fact that uh, the industry, that the use of drones is changing, that the industry is changing. We are in a huge dynamic. Um, and Stewart's, uh, you know, enterprise uh, represents and uh, comports with uh, fairly dramatic changes. But can you guys, uh, Ted, can you help me understand what those changes are right now? What, uh, and maybe it's the Rule 07, 107, maybe it's the test you took, the license you're getting. Um, what is changing that we need to get a handle on? Sure. Uh, the 107 is going to basically open the door to a lot of experiences and because it enables commercial operations without an exemption. I had also introduced to some, uh, some, I wouldn't call them difficulties, but additional tasks of the type that Stewart solves in, in order to operate within the proximity, proximity of an airport. There's some uh, 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 understandings that have to be created and some licenses in effect that have to be generated. So there's that sort of discovery that will go on here. We together, industry, agency, university, and the FAA will all learn where the hard points are, the, the high rocks in the river are, so to speak, over the next period of time. And then from that, we can uh, begin to see where the changes have to occur in the technology and in the operations in order to proceed. One of the areas that's going to be a big change is that of the communications framework between a ground station and the drone or between the ground station and the air traffic control people. Uh, right now, we're using what's called, in general, using what's called unlicensed uh, radio frequencies or spectrum, which is what everybody uses the, the garage door openers and uh, the Wi-Fi and all that sort of thing uses the same frame of reference that the drones do to communicate that's not gonna that's not very durable not very survivable and isn't gonna last so there's gonna be major changes in the way that the software waveforms are defined and the frequencies are allocated and maybe even in the way the receiver and transmitter conduct business between each other uh, so that's a major change coming and uh, that will uh, produce a yet another dimension of the type of thing Stuart deals with, which is how does your radio spectrum and the use of that spectrum survive under an, like an urban canyon situation where you have a lot of reflections off buildings and such, or you have a lot of uh, electronic 
electromagnetic noise being generated. We're going to have to work through how to do all that. And in, in order to make sure you're safe in that environment, uh, testing and certification and design principles will occur. And it is that sort of thing that Stewart's system will track to make sure that as the requirements change, your system complies. So uh, we're Stuart, you know, what, uh, one of the things that I think is relevant uh, going forward on drones as it is on automobiles is the technology around automated cars and therefore also automated uh, drones. And some of them are already automated to a large degree. But, uh, you know, uh, this past week, Singapore installed uh, the first or allowed the first group of automated cars to run on its highways. Uh, and in that regard, it's probably ahead of the U.S. And I surmise that one of the changes in the industry is or will soon be uh, drones that are completely automated that don't require uh, a pilot uh, during their flight, that the whole flight plan is, uh, you know, is set by software. Um, do you include that in one of the changes that you have to address? Absolutely. And, and our system, and that's the future proof, and our system will help move from the human element to the totally automated element. Uh, and there's no difference in what you're going to need to know. There's no difference about the transparency and accountability. You just might uh, take out the human and plug in uh, something that will allow that to happen. But as those things, those new technologies come, our SOA-based architecture allows us to communicate with them, interact with them, and that's kind of the things that we're doing with the uh, air environment and UTM. And we're automating that whole process to fly beyond visual line of sight so you know where you're going, so you know if there are any obstacles for you to be in there. And then as things change in the industry and they try to bring on new technology, you'll have awareness of what else is going on and the, and the computers the aircraft themselves or the other things around them will have that sense and sense and avoid to make that happen. Stuart, you're at the front end. You're at the frontier. This must be very exciting for you. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm envious of your situation in the technology. Let me, let me interject a comment if I can, Jay. That's a really great point. And I will say also that the question you asked uh, Stuart before, Stuart answered with one word, absolutely. That is the shortest answer to a question Stuart has ever generated, except once when I heard him say no, which was shorter. But uh, the, the, the point that follows... Well, all I that can give you a short answer, Ted. Uh, we're we're <laughs> out sure of time. So. We've had a well, wonderful discussion with you and Stuart. We're out of time, and I'm sorry about that. I, I hope you guys can set up another show and go further, because I think we've only touched the surface, and I think we, uh, we have a moving target anyway, which we should follow through. So, uh, Ted, thank you so much for setting this up. That's Ted Ralston, our host, uh, who joins us by Skype audio from the Big Island, and Stuart Rudolph, who is the president of Smart C2, uh, making great software called Vir Virtual Air Boss. Um, and he's uh, joining us from Skype video from Fort Lauderdale. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'm sorry we went out of time, but I sure appreciate the conversation. Aloha. 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 Thank you.